Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our vocabulary lesson number 72. Let's begin, shall we? The very first word that we want to learn today is a very straightforward word. You will see in a second. And the word is canvas. This word as it is written, this word as it is written is in fact very straightforward, very simple word. You know what a canvas is. Canvas is something that you are that we use for painting. Or it's a material that you make tennis ball out of. You can have a canvas tennis ball, you can make a tent out of it. Uh, we can make tennis ball, we can make tents, we can make sails for the, for the boats and so forth. That canvas is very straightforward. Everybody knows that. That's not a big deal. The question is, what does the word mean if it has two S's? What does this word mean, canvas? Well, if it has two S's, it's no longer a noun. It is no longer a noun, it is now a verb. But the pronunciation does not change, as you can see, it's, it's still canvas. What does it mean? To canvas. It's a verb now because it has two S's and as a verb, as a verb, it actually has two meanings. It has two meanings. We're going to run both of them obviously. The first meaning to first meaning to canvas means to go to go door to door soliciting soliciting votes or subscriptions. Subscriptions or orders. So the guy who rings your doorbell and he's trying to sell you some encyclopedia, but the guy who goes door to door selling uh, selling some vacuum cleaner or whatever whatever the hell he may be selling, well he's canvassing. What is he doing? He's canvassing. If somebody comes to, if somebody comes to your door because they're conducting an opinion poll to conduct. A survey of public opinion. I don't know how to spell opinion. O to take poll. The person who goes around door to door in the town or in the village taking surveys, well, he's canvassing the village. What is it? What are you going to do tomorrow morning? Well, tomorrow morning I can't come to to the game. I'm I'm supposed to be canvassing the village. I'm supposed to be taking the poll, or I'm supposed to be selling something door to door, or I'm taking some opinion, uh, or or you might be a politician. You might be a politician where you go door to doors, knocking on pe uh, knocking on people's door, and introducing yourself and tell the telling them that you're running for this particular election. Please vote for me. Well, that uh, campaigning that you're doing door-to-door, -door, that campaigning is called canvassing. What's the second meaning of the word canvas? Second meaning of the word canvas is to, again it's a verb, it means to, to examine something, to examine something thoroughly. If you examine something very thoroughly, if you scrutinize something very closely, to if you scrutinize something very closely or if you discuss if you discuss some topic if you discuss something if you discuss something thoroughly Or in detail, if we sit down and we have a meeting where we discuss some topic very thoroughly, very carefully, we scrutinize all the details of it, well, we are canvassing. We are canvassing that particular topic. Or you can canvass door to door, asking for a word, asking for an order, asking for a subscription, asking for uh, their opinion. And that's called canvassing. But it has two S's if you're going to use this in this context as a word. Do you understand? So don't confuse the two. The first one, as I said before, everybody knows, is the second one that you have to be careful with, with the two S's. 
Just move on now. We're going to learn something new, something different. What does this expression mean? It's, the next one is not a word, it's an expression. What does it mean to, to gain currency? Do you know the meaning of this expression? To gain currency? What does it mean to gain currency? To gain currency means to become widely acceptable. If you, if you tell somebody that this particular idea is gaining currency, this particular idea, this particular notion is gaining currency, what you're telling them is that this particular idea is finally becoming popular. This particular idea is becoming more acceptable than before. To become popular. To become popular. To become prevalent. To become common. To become common. Now we understand all of these words that we are learning here, all of these words that we are learning in our vocabulary lessons, and of course we have been at it for 70 some days now, day number 72, all of these words are words that crop up on a regular basis on this, on this standardized exam, on the ACT, on the SAT, on the GRE, on the GMAT, and I just saw recently a question on the exam, I, I don't remember whether it was GRE or whether it was SAT, it was one of the, or maybe it could have been ACT, where it was a very straightforward question, all you had to do is read the sentence and finish it. Finish the, there was a missing word obviously, you had a missing word and they give you the five answer choices and your job is to pick a word to finish the sentence. And one of the answer choices was currency. And almost all the students who were taking the exam in the classroom got it wrong because they didn't quite understand that in the context of what currency means to be popular. And of course once you don't understand the right answer, you, you inadvertently end up picking one of the other four answer choices. There are five answer choices here. And if this, if you don't understand the meaning of the word in the right answer, you don't see why, how the currency is going to make a sense in a sentence because you're using the word currency in a normal sense and you can't, you can't make any sense out of it, then obviously you're going to pick one of the others. It doesn't matter which, which one of the four other, which, which one of the other four that you pick. It doesn't matter which one you pick, whether you pick A, C, D or E, you're going to be wrong because none of them actually make sense. To, for an idea, for a theory, for a notion, to gain currency means that it becomes more popular, it becomes more widely acceptable. For example, you might say that this theory, this theory, though very controversial when it was first proposed in the 60s, Michael's theory, or whatever the scientist's name is, his theory, though very, pop, though very controversial when it was first proposed in the 60s, it was very controversial when he first came up with this idea, though it was very controversial when it was first proposed in the 60s, is now gaining currency. Is now gaining currency. You see? The idea, and then a whole bunch of stuff in between, the idea, and then here you will put down all the other stuff that I told you. I'm going to say it one more time. And of course you can separate it with the with the hyphens or you can separate them with commas. Typically we use commas. The idea, the idea, and in between the commas you will have this, uh, this uh, statement here, the idea, and in the grammar it has a, it has a term for it which I, which I can't remember right now, the idea, though very controversial when it was first proposed in the 60s, on the comma, is is now gaining is now gaining currency is now becoming more widely acceptable in other words it is no longer as controversial that's all let's move on then let's move on let's put it right underneath here What does it mean to breach? A breach 
Well, I said, what does it mean to breach? You can use it as a verb or you can use it as a noun. What's, what, is, what is a breach? A breach is a violation. It's a violation or, if you like, infraction. Infraction is a more formal word. Infraction is more of a legal term. Infraction means you violated a law. You can, you can violate, you can have an infraction of a law, one can breach, one can breach a law, one can breach a legal obligation. You had a legal, you had a legal obligation to do something, you were required to do something, but you didn't do it. So you breached, you breached the term, you breached the term, you breached the, you breached the promise. You can, you can breach a uh, law, you can breach an obligation, you can breach a promise or you can breach a custom or a tradition. You can breach somebody's confidence. To breach somebody's confidence means, to, means that you violated his confidence. He, he, had, he confided in you, he, had, uh, he, he trusted you. He trusted you with his money and you took his money and ran away, you breached his confidence, you broke his confidence, you violated his confidence. You can breach friendship. You can breach terms of contracts. To breach terms of contract means to you violated the contract. Contract said something something and you did something else to breach contract. You can breach tradition, uh, customs, mores. Oh, what are mores? I just said you can breach customs, traditions, mores. You know what mores are? I shouldn't have brought it up here because now I do not know which day we learned it. Day number 45 actually here. Watch, watch day number 45 and you will learn the word mores. And you will see what they are. Let's keep on going. The next word we want to learn is... In O inordinate. Inordinate. What does it mean? It's an adjective. Inordinate means excessive. Excessive. It means unreasonable. It means immoderate. It means Exceeding, exceeding the norms, what are considered norms, what are considered acceptable limits, you exceed it. It's inordinate. Exceeding, it means to exceed reasonable limits. And you, you might have heard me use this word, uh, word many a times. And what I say to you is that if you're solving, particularly when we're solving a math problems, what, what, what I tell uh, the clients is that it is one thing to be able to solve a problem. Solving, being able to solve a problem is not enough. It's no good if, if you could solve the problem, but if it took you an inordinate amount of time, if it took you an unreasonable amount of time, if it takes you 10 minutes to solve a problem, then it's no good. It's worthless. You don't have 10 minutes in the exam to solve one problem. You cannot take an inordinate amount of time. You cannot take unreasonable amount of time. You cannot take excessive amount of time. Uh, yeah, uh, th then it's no good, it's worthless. You understand? That's how we use the word in the context. To take an inordinate amount of time means you're taking a lot of time, you're taking very unreasonable amount of time, you're taking, you're taking excessive amount of time. The word was inordinate. The last word we want to learn is, of course we have to erase this thing, just give me one second. Inebriated. I 
inebriated, which is a very fancy way of saying drunk. Or, if you like, intoxicated. To be drunk or to be intoxicated means to be inebriated. Today as I speak, today as I speak, I believe it's 22nd of October, 22nd of October 2013, about a year ago last year, around Thanksgiving time, not around Thanksgiving times, on the Thanksgiving day, we were at somebody's place, somebody's house where we go for Thanksgiving dinner every year, it's a tradition that we have. And I have a 10 year old, well last year he was 9 year old obviously, I have a 10 year old, last year uh, in front of everybody, uh, everybody was listening and my boy, a 9 year old at that time, walked up to this the, the host and he said to him, and I'm, I won't use his name, I'm going to make up a name here, he says, Michael, you look, you look inebriated. <laughs> obviously he's a child, he doesn't have tact, he doesn't realize that that's not the kind of things you tell to somebody, particularly to the host. But that's what he said. You look inebriated to me, he said to, 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 to the gentleman. You look, you look drunk. You look intoxicated. You had a little bit too much to drink. Do you understand? Yes. It seems to, it seems to us that those bloody Marys that you're having probably had a little bit too much blood in them. Let's cut down a little bit, shall we? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.